Bitch, what's happening, guys? It is Monday, and we are at the Hack and Pack Shop. All right. I wasn't going to make a video quite yet, but I'm making a video quite yet. Now, is what I did here, I, made, I came up with this little concoction, little fiberglass resin jelly with some regular fiberglass resin, okay? Mixed it all together in my little hoo whipty here. All right, and I guess I just mixed up a little too much. Now, is what I'm doing, sorry, again, working with one hand holding the camera. I got to get a helper. I'm smearing it over all these welds. All right, now I was going to actually take a little bit of time and talk to you about the welds and how to cover them up and whatnot. Now, if you look here, because we're going to have to talk about the welds now that I'm kind of covering them, but you can still see them. There's a, there's a tack weld about every inch or less on here. The right way to do this, guys, welding, I mean, really, you should, it should be seamless. It shouldn't be a bunch of tacks. It should be a constant bead. You know, you go half inch, and then skip over here half inch, skip over here half inch. But when it's all said and done, you, you want a real full kind of um, uh, bead on it, all right? Again, this is my little project. This is my beater Jeep. I really don't care a whole lot about quality, obviously, on this thing. So, yeah. Now, I haven't started smearing this on the other side yet. I figured I'd just have enough for the one side here, but... I mixed plenty, so before the stuff dries, I just kind of want to use it all up because it's not cheap. Now, why did I mix resin and jelly together, the regular just liquid and, and jelly? And it's messy, too. It's runny. And that's the reason why I did it. It's runny enough, mixing the two, where it's going to seep down in down the back side of this metal, where there, where there isn't, like, the bead of weld, like, right here, right there. There's no weld. Okay, it's going to kind of run down the back side of that. And that's what it's going to do is it's going to seal it all up. Now, I could go over this with some tiger hair or something like that. But, um, you know, a lot of these body fillers have talc in them. Talc, that's what's in your foot powder. That's what helps absorb the sweat from your stinky ass feet. All right, talc absorbs water. So, basically, is what you're doing... If, if there's something wrong with the bodywork on this thing, where there's a little bit of Bondo or something that seeps through, you're freaking basically absorbing water in your body filler, which is going to make it um, pretty much is going to make it bubble up. See, I was actually going to like set this camera up and do a video doing this side of it. I figured I'd just do the other side off camera. And then this is what I was going to do is put this stuff on, on camera on this side. And then I was going to start sanding it on the other side so I didn't have to stay here as long. All right, it's already freaking after 6 o'clock screwing around with a freaking junky Jeep. I kind of want to go home. But I'm just smearing all this over all these areas where I welded. Not going over the whole thing, just where I welded. So it'll kind of run down the back side of it and stick to the front side of it. And it'll make a real waterproof bond. Okay, this stuff, I mean, this fiberglass is what they make boats and Corvettes and, you know, like stuff out of. They don't make stuff out of Duraglass. All right, they just make it to pack rust spots. <laughs> That's what that stuff's for. But it doesn't, honestly, guys, it doesn't hold up that Dura glass like you think it would. They say water resistant, waterproof. They are full of shit. This resin and jelly is waterproof. There's a lot of this in the Sabotaru. And no problems with that thing other than a tree falling on it and crushing it. For you guys that don't know that, tree fell on it last summer, crushed it over my storage side and you guys see the etch primer I had this thing actually sitting outside for a little while and it was raining and I didn't really want the rust going down the back side of it see now I did get carried away earlier I had a little dura glass left and did go over this back here and that was a big no-no I should have just waited but hey that's gonna be the first place that bubbles I'll guarantee you 
when this thing does start bubbling. That's another reason why I'm keeping this, is because I want to see really how long this is going to last. I'm kind of curious. I'm not really used to packing them quite like this. I mean, this is a pretty much half-assed job, big time. I'm doing it on this Jeep. Oops. Now you guys are probably bitching. Jesus, hold the freaking camera still. Why don't you guys come here and hold the damn camera for me? That's the way I look at it. So I'm a bitch. I'm using my cell phone. All right, that should work pretty good. Now it's left. And this thing, I'm just gonna freaking uh, just dump it on this floor. I just have the floor kind of tacked in, half ass, whatever. If it'll actually run out. There we go. Just run right down that seam, all nice and purty. I'll smear it around with a spreader. We need seam sealer. I'll just hold the son bitch up there like that right there. How about that? Looks like I had a little accident. Stuff starting to set up a little bit now. Perfect. This Jeep is just whatever, however, wherever. I have no clue why ever. There we go. All right, that's how you get rid of your leftovers. Try to scrape a little out of the bottom here. And guys, this isn't a show car. This thing is for strictly function. Not purdiness, not doing it right, not doing it perfect. I mean, this is probably a bad example to use for some how-to videos. We'll just, wait, I should rename it. How to freaking hack the hell out of something. How you like that? All right. Now we're just gonna let this set. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take the spreader here. Any access, the spreader will peel up. Yeah, we have a little bit there. You could use it somewhere. Stuff is starting to set up nice. Just what I like. A little bit more on the floor. And this is strong stuff, this, this resin jelly. Very, very strong. And waterproof. like that we'll do the same thing on this side any leftover Oop. let's throw a little bit over here somewhere right over the rust <laughs> son of a bitch Stuff's all over my hands. That's always fun to get off. Lacquer thinner, if it's still wet, usually it'll cut it. There. Now we'll let the she had set. Some bitch. Off. Alright, some bitch, I'm back. 
All right, guys, sorry I couldn't, like, be too thorough with you earlier. I was kind of, just kind of sort of multitasking. Um, actually, we'll go over to the side where there's actually a little bit more light on this Jeeper. All right, now, is what I did off camera is I took some of the, the rest of the, the uh, resin jelly I had. Now, there's a difference. You got your resin jelly, and then you got your regular resin, okay? Resin. Resin jelly. The jelly's like jelly. The resin's runny like syrup, probably a little bit thicker than syrup, okay? I took the resin jelly and went right over the top of the resin jelly and resin mixture that I made. Figure a little wet on wet, it'll be good for adhesion purposes, and it'll also build up a little bit. Um, I know one of you said something to me like, hey, you know, tell me what you do before you put on body filler. How do you cover up all those nasty, gobbly, goobly welds? Is what you do with the welds, now you can see them, a lot of them right through this body filler. Now see it's just kind of, it's still pretty wet here. So let's go to where we can actually see some welds. Alright, right there you can see some welds. Okay. What you want to do is grind them down as flat as possible. Now you can see here that there's actually an edge. Those I didn't have ground down quite too smooth. Most of them are ground down as flush as possible. There are some that weren't, so that's going to create a problem a little later on when it comes time to actually put real body filler on it and start getting it smooth because what's going to happen, if those welds aren't ground down as close and smooth as possible, they're going to keep popping through your body filler. You're going to keep having high spots and you're going to have to keep building out that body filler to hide those welds. Now with this, again, I can't stress enough, I don't know how many times I've said it already, this Jeep, it's not a show vehicle, it's not... You know anything oh, what the hell oh that'll cause it oh yeah I noticed too these strikers on this door they stick there we go um, you know this is gonna be again my beater winter rat trail ride okay I'm not really doing everything quite so right on this thing <laughs> at all all right it's just kind of hack and pack as you go here just whatever to make it work what a lot of you guys would probably do at home in your garage is trying to you know, make the thing last a little bit longer. Now, what I'm doing on this Jeep, I'm giving it another good four or five years worth of life, guys, as long as the drivetrain holds up. I mean, this thing really should have went to the junkyard. It really should have. But it didn't. It came to pisser. All right, let me set you up on a box so I can sit down. My freaking back is killing me. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to tape you to a cardboard box. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> All right, maybe that'll work. Yeah, you like literally taped to a box here. All right. I'm going to sit down. Freaking back is killing me. And my chooch. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. I'm giving this thing life that the previous owner couldn't. Uh, the guy that owned this Jeep, the gentleman, he was, uh, I believe in his 60s, he, he passed away. His friend actually sold it to me. They were just kind of getting rid of stuff. And he pretty much point blank told me, look, if you don't buy it, you're like the last hope for this Jeep. It's going to the junk air. Junk air to give me a couple hundred bucks. They'll come get it, blah, 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 blah. And I said, look, I'll give you 250 for it. You know, give you 50 bucks over what junk's going to give you. You got money in your pocket today. He's like, cool, appreciate it. So, I mean, it was junkyard bound. Really, I guess it probably should have went to the junkyard. But I, I don't have the heart to really send stuff to the junkyard. That's kind of what I do is try to bring stuff back to life. I mean, yeah, the approach that I take on a lot of these vehicles um, all the time isn't the most correct, but I give them more life regardless. I get, you know, if they get another couple of years out of them, three years out of them, even six months, some people only need to get through another month. Do what you can do, get me through another month, please. You know, that's what I do. I'm not taking you to the freaking bank, okay? I'm just doing what I can do to make these things roll just a little bit longer. 
I mean, I know one of you mentioned, you know, well, you know, those panels that you bought, they should have just fit if you would have cut all the spot welds, blah, 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 blah. If I would have taken cut all the spot welds out of the side panel of this Jeep and totally removed that whole side, <laughs> that body probably on that side would have collapsed. And then it would have been working with nothing. All right, there's a reason why I do certain things when it actually comes to the hacking end of it. I mean, yeah, the right way to do it would be to buy a, you know, a, a Kappa certified whole quarter panel to go down the whole side of this Jeep for $350, 400 bucks. That'd be the right way to do it. And then cut all the spot welds. Then you're dealing with door hinges that are rusted on. You guys have dealt with those torque spits. You know how they are. They strip, they break. I mean, any guys that work on Jeeps hate Jeep because of the fasteners they use. They can't use a regular nut and bolt. They gotta use these damn torque bits that always strip. Where are you going? I'm not spending three, four hours screwing around with a couple strip bolts on a door hinge. Not worth it. I'm cutting around it, weld it in. Four hours, that whole side's done. Four hours, the whole other side was done, including the floorboards. Well, the floors are just kind of tacked in. So like eight hours, roughly, on the bo actual body of this thing, and it's come a long ways. That would it, it would take a guy 10 to 20 hours to put a quarter on this thing right, and that's if it was a solid newer vehicle. This thing's rusted. So you're dealing with everything. Bad um, body substructure on it, bad floors, the, the bracing, you know, everything. The only thing solid in the body of this thing is like the actual wheel housings in the back. The rear floor is pretty good, and the dash. <laughs> Other than that, this body's firewall's all right, too. Somebody did go through and put fenders on it. Sweet, that saves me a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I did get a tailgate for it, 42 bucks on eBay. <laughs> I can't fix it for that. $42, come on. So I got a tailgate coming for 42 bucks. Now, I was going to fix the one that was on it just to give you guys another video. But I guess I, you know, I don't mind dealing with four... Torx bolts to change a whole gate, <laughs> which I'll probably just cut the sons of bitches off and put regular, you know, headed bolts on, you know, like some 10, 12, 13 mils, whatever. Um, the frame, frame should have been changed. I mean, really, it should have been. But this whole idea of this Jeep and these videos is to save money and sometimes time. A lot of guys don't have thousand bucks to go buy a used frame a lot of guys don't have a thousand bucks to go buy a used body used frame used body there's two grand right there figure all the fasteners every nut and bolt on the thing you're changing you know fasteners aren't cheap and you know probably use stainless like I did on my CJ everything on it stainless it, it falls apart if I want it to you know what I mean everything comes loose on that Jeep you know every hose I mean where, where do you stop I'm not gonna put three four five thousand dollars into a Jeep I paid 250 bucks for that's really only worth when it's done a couple three thousand bucks at best okay it's just it's not smart really I mean yeah you can restore it and the only way you're gonna really get your money out of it's if you keep it ten years me I can't keep anything ten well I have kept my CJ ten years more than that but I mean, for the most part, I can't keep a car more than a year. I get bored of them. They're down the road. <laughs> All right. This thing I'm going to hang on to, though, just because a lot of what I'm doing on this is experimental, like with the frame. I want to see how it's going to hold up, just like you guys do. And the body, how is this really going to hold up? You know, to every day, while me, I guess, is normal use with a vehicle, I'm more on the abusive use <laughs> when it comes to a vehicle, especially something like this that you can go trail riding with. I'm not going to say extreme conditions, but definitely pounding the hell out of it here and there. Um, so I'm just kind of interested to see how this thing holds up, just like you guys are interested like on that metal panel. How'd that thing hold up? Guys, I haven't seen it in over a year. I think my scrap guy accidentally took it because it is over close to where I keep my scrap metal. And it's gone. That son bitch. <laughs> that piece of metal's been gone. I can't find it anywhere. So I guess we're going to start out with a new one, but... It's kind of what I want to do for, for another repair panel is actually take um, like a fender or a, an actual body panel, like a rusted fender, something like that, and um, actually, you know, use it using some, you know, a little bit of body filler in one spot over a hole, put a little metal patch half-ass kind of 
what I'm doing on this Jeep with a with a patchwork. Now you know it's solid, but it's not right. We'll do something like that, and then we'll actually you know seam weld the whole thing up nice. Put a little body filler over the whole thing. I'll mark it all on the back side, and we'll see how the thing actually holds up. I kind of want to do something like that. And then maybe we'll find another test panel. I mean, I've got sheet metal laying all over the shop. You know, then we can start, you know, spray can primer, etch primer, spray paint, spray paint clear coat, you know, then regular automotive, you know, base coat, regular automotive clear coat, um, epoxy primers. It just, it takes time, guys, and I don't have a ton of it. I'm into this whole Jeep so far for roughly... I think I'm into it for about 20 hours, and that includes my time going to pick it up. That's what I've got into this Jeep so far, about 20 hours. So my budget on this Jeep, I don't want to go over $1,000 in total with it, and I don't want to go over 50 hours. All right, so I've got roughly 30 hours to go worth of work to do on this Jeep before my time budget, and we always go over, but I'm trying to keep it under. Just to show you guys what $50 with two or 50 hours with, with two hands in minimal expense can do. Okay, it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be the most beautiful paint job you've ever seen, but it's sure as heck not gonna be the worst. Things gonna look great from 10, you know, eight, 10 feet away. It's gonna look great going down the road. It's gonna look great sitting in my driveway and it's gonna look really great going down the trail covered in mud. Um, that's just kind of how I look at it. It's, it's a beater. I ordered the um, the pieces for the rear frame. They're I don't know a little maybe 18 inches long, something like that. They're actual repair panels that go on the frame. And you kind of just weld them all into place and you know whatnot. You pretty much box in the existing frame with those. Um, I did buy those. They were 60 bucks. They're coming, so we're gonna put those on it. I'm figuring about eight hours to do the whole rear frame. Probably not even. Um, and that really pretty much should button it up, throw a gate on it. You know, these floors, I'm going to take some tiger hair, just kind of smear it all around, get it in all the seams, everywhere as I can get it. And um, we're going to call it good. I'm going to bed liner the hell out of the inside of the floor. Um, I'm actually going to put a regular paint job on the exterior. I was going to bed liner it, but bed liner, yeah, it's durable, cool stuff. But when that stuff starts to crack, or, you know, say you damage a fender and you need to change the fender. I mean, that stuff's just a bitch to work with after it dries. I, I don't want to really deal with it on the exterior of a vehicle. Um, I've dealt with it, you know, with trade-ins, whatever, that have come in. People have bedlinered the whole lower part of their truck. And it's like, oh, yeah, you guys don't even understand what it's like to get that stuff off. It's terrible. So I'd rather just put regular automotive finish on it, even if it requires an extra eight hours worth of body work, or probably not even. It's all flat panels on this thing, guys. You can take that bit, that big wheel I got, sander, freaking, you know, like literally, I'm gonna spend another hour per side on this thing, on the body work, if that. Probably another hour on the rear, and uh, the, the thing will be ready for actual paint. Um, but I'm not going to do really too much body filler work until the floors and all that stuff are all sealed up and I start working on that rear frame just because in case I do flex it, I don't want any regular body filler cracking. It shouldn't, um, you know, I put the resin and the resin jelly and stuff on there. That's strong stuff. That stuff is not gonna easily crack, okay? And it's running in, you know, hopefully into like every nook and cranny in between all those welds. Um, so if there is a little gap in the steel, it's gonna kind of seep its way in behind that and give it a good watertight seal. And that's really what you want. And then when it's all said and done, I'll get underneath the body, and I probably will use some kind of a bed liner undercoating something on the underside of the body where you don't see it just to kind of seal everything up. I'll probably try to um, use some spray on rhino liner or something like that on the lower part of the body. But I'm going to get underneath it and wire wheel what I can and, um, you know, just half-ass, nothing special, just kind of half-ass wire wheel it and put some kind of a coating on it just to knock all that, that scale off it. So... Hopefully you guys totally get where I'm at. Um, again, it's not a customer vehicle. It's my own. It's a beater. I'm probably going a little too far with it. In some people's eyes, I'm not doing it totally right, whatever. Not intending to. Don't want to do it all right. I'm doing it cheap, on a budget, so it's cost effective, time effective for myself because I'm a very busy person. I don't have time to spend 12 hours per side putting a quarter panel on. I'm sorry. I just don't have that kind of time. 
I mean, if you got that kind of time and you want to come here and work on it, it's sitting here. <laughs> okay. But um, that, that's how I look at it. 50 hours is the budget, $1,000 is the financial budget, and um, that's it. Uh, financially, how far am I into it so far? I figure roughly about 500 bucks, right where I'm sitting right now. Like I said, all the steel was laying around the shop. The, um, the side panels I got really cheap, even though they're crappy and don't fit worth a hoop. Um, and really the only out-of-pocket expense, I'm probably going to throw 100 bucks worth of paint on a stupid thing. Probably another 100 bucks worth of materials on it for paint. And um, other than that, it's just going to be stupid stuff to get the Jeep actually going. Rhino liner ain't going to be cheap. It's going to be like 100 bucks. Okay. Um, other than that, I really can't think of a whole lot. All the real money has been spent except for like 300 bucks. So I might actually be under budget. And, uh, yeah, so I guess I'll shut up and go home, glue these two clips together for you guys real quick. Let's see if this stuff's actually semi-dry. Well, it's still kind of gooey, but it is starting to set up. But it's still gooey. So that'll be that, guys. This is where we're at with it. Um, maybe tomorrow night, if I'm feeling ambitious or really early. I get here super early in the morning, guys, like 6, 7 o'clock. So if I get here really early, maybe I'll take the next step. Pretty much I'm taking the grinder over everything I just put on. I'm just going to real quick with a grinder. Okay, and then it'll be ready for, um, I don't know if I'm just going <clears> to <throat> throw some Duraglass over all this or just kind of lay in with just the regular uh you know like the regular body filler the stuff i've been using this place is a mess it wants to come clean this is what i use for body filler it's the platinum plus 3m it's actually really nice stuff that sands really easy and uh, it's not that expensive i guess it's like 40 bucks a gallon something like that you know how much body filler is going to be on this thing honestly Probably about a half a gallon, I'm not going to lie to you. There's probably going to be about a half a gallon of body filler in this Jeep. And it could, I mean, depending on how straight you want it, it could be three quarters of a gallon. I'm not going, basically, I'm just going to kind of get everything feathered out. There's probably going to be a few little um, things left over in the, uh, or some, some ripples, I should say, in the, uh, in the sheet metal. I know there's a couple, like there's kind of a weird ripple in here. I think there was one on the other side, like right in here. Other than that, the metal's all pretty straight, so I might not even use a half a gallon. But don't forget, i got to contend with all this. I put a little resin and stuff over all this back here, too. Um, and like I said, I'll probably put some tiger hair. I think i got a quart of tiger hair kicking around. I'm just going to go over the floors. You know, at least it's got floors in it now. They're not going anywhere. So that'll be it, guys. Hope y'all have a goody-goody. I'm out. Later. Oh, yeah. See assholes. That was chooch, not me. Later.